Okay, this is another Simulink uh, tutorial, and in class we talked about um, how to model a DC motor. Well, we started off with some differential equations, and then we did a signal flow graph, and then we kind of uh, came up with some transfer functions, and basically in the S domain you can model a DC motor as an armature voltage going into a summer, and then you get a voltage out, and then you have a transfer function that basically looks like a low-pass filter that consists of the electrical part of the motor, the armature, uh, inductance and resistance, which will output a current, voltage in, current out. And then you have a proportionality constant uh, that will give you the torque. Now, torque was proportional to armature current because we made the assumption of a DC shunt motor. And then, of course, you could have a varying load, which we can model as a torque going into here. So say we have some torque, T sub m, the motor torque, and then all of a sudden, if um, our load increases drastically, we could put a negative number in here to decrease that torque to kind of simulate a heavy load. Right, so this guy allows me to model um, a varying load. Well, the second part of the motor is the mechanical part, where you had uh, friction and uh, inertia in the form of a low-pass filter in the Laplace domain. Then the output of that would be um, omega, which is radians per second. Then the velocity, radians per second omega, got fed back through a constant, which was your back EMF. Right? In a motor, as the armature rotates, it has the generator effect, which generates a back EMF. That back EMF approaches the armature voltage, which then um, decreases the armature current and it kind of stabilizes the DC motor. If the load increases, the motor slows down, the back EMF decreases, which will cause more uh, armature current. Okay, So what I want to do is I want to take this DC, this model of a DC motor and implement that guy into um, Simulink in the form of a subsystem. All right, so let's do that. So what we want to do over here is create a new model. All right, so there's my new model. And let's see, we'll go to uh, Simulink here. Let's see, I'll close that guy down. Actually, I can leave it open. And then what I'll do is I'll go to some sources. And we typically, you know, want to put a step into our motor. All right, there's my step. And then we want to plot the output. All right, so let's put a scope there. And I always want that mux, it seems like, to kind of uh, have multiple plots. So let's put that guy into there, and we'll connect that there. And then... Um, what we want to do here is we want to build a DC motor. All right, so let's uh, <coughs> make some room here and connect that guy back up. All right, so the DC motor, if you remember, well, let's kind of drag that guy back over on this screen here. We basically have a voltage going in, a summer, two transfer functions, electrical, mechanical, proportionality on the... Um, uh, current to torque and then back EMF and we'll kind of ignore the load torque maybe we'll do that in, a, in another very in another tutorial all right let's do that so what do I need I need a summer all right commonly used blocks let's get a summer in here and then uh, go to continuous get a couple of transfer functions all right there you go a couple of transfer functions and if I hold down the control key and drag I get two transfer functions going to need some uh, amplifiers here. All right, so let's call that guy. There's an amplifier there. Hit the control key and drag off of there. There's another amplifier. All right, so how is all this hooked up? Well, let's see. The step went to the summer. Now, the summer was negative feedback, so we have to change one of these positives to a negative. And then we had my electrical dynamics. That describes what's going on in the armature. And then coming out of here, we took that current, and there was a proportionality constant that converted that to torque. And that torque went into a mechanical transfer function that uh, was a function of friction and um, inertia. Okay. And then the output of that went, let's see, we wanted to plot that. All right. Raise up that there. And then you've got your back EMF. All right. So let's uh, flip that guy. The back EMF took the feedback, which was uh, radians per second, and it ran it through that summer. Okay, negative feedback. All right, so there's your DC motor with the step applied, built-in feedback, back EMF, and then let's uh, plot the uh, applied signal. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and run this guy. And there you go. Yeah, you get kind of a, um, let's see, yeah. You, the yellow plot here is you apply a DC step, and the output of the motor kind of has a little tiny bit of overshoot, and then it stabilizes. Now, of course, you've got some steady state error in there, but, you know, we just threw in some uh, coefficients. Well, the whole point of this guy is to actually 
convert this to a subsystem. All right, so how can we convert this to a subsystem? Well, what I can do here is, let's move this guy up to here a little bit. And what I want to do is I want to select these components right here. Okay, so I've got this part of the uh, model selected, which is going to be my DC motor. And then I go to Diagram, let's see, Subsystem and Model, Create some Subsystem from Selection, and there you go. So at this point right here, I've created a subsystem, which effectively is a DC motor. So I can come down to here and change this title to uh, DC motor. And um, let's see, we can kind of bring things in a little bit now. We don't need to have them all spread out so much. Well, let's see, I didn't want to do that. Uh, let's see, we bring all this stuff back here, and I could kind of drag, let's see, oh, can, I, can I bring that guy? There you go. Bring that back into there, bring that stuff up to here, and there you go. There's my DC motor. Now, what I can do, um, if I double-click this DC motor, I will see my subsystem, and there's my subsystem right there, all right? Kind of move this guy down a little bit, it's in the middle of the screen. And then you'll notice right here, DC Motors, my subsystem. If I click on Untitled, that'll take me up to my main control system. Um, you have some arrows down here in the lower left that allow you to collapse that Explorer. And then you can click on Untitled for the entire system or DC Motor for the actual thing that's inside the uh, subsystem. Okay. So yeah, so now it's pretty cool. So really now you've got that DC Motor, you can copy and paste and use a whole bunch of those guys. Well, let's see if we can change the input. If we go back to our model, what was going into there? Well, that was armature voltage. Let's double click on this guy and then go over to our input node and let's change that to EA, armature, uh, armature voltage. Now, if I go back to my overall system, notice EA is my armature voltage. Now, what's the output of my DC motor model? Well, it's the velocity, radians per second. Let's double click that, and what do we call radians per second? Well, that's typically omega, but in the uh, Laplace domain, you know, that would be omega, okay? And if we go back up to here, we have uh, armature voltage going in, omega coming back down there. Now, if we run this guy, there you go. There's my plot right there, my step response, and there you go. You've got it, okay? Now... Um, that's kind of neat. Now what you can do now is set this guy up so that um, you can have your parameters in here. Okay. So let's double click the DC motor, or actually let's see, I could uh, use the Explorer window over here and I click on DC motor. And notice, this first transfer function, if you remember right, it, um, it was a function of the armature resistance and inductance. And I believe that uh, first term was armature resistance. And this guy right now, actually it was armature inductance, wasn't it? And this guy right here was armature resistance, right? So yeah, so now I've got LA times S plus RAS. Well, question is, is what is LA and what's RA? Well, if we run this guy, we're going to get a nice little error. We didn't define those. Okay, so what we can do is go back to the entire system, right click on my subsystem here, and choose um, mask and let's see create mask and it brings up this window and now you notice you can uh, you can put an icon on that thing and make it look like a DC motor if you want using standard MATLAB commands to read and write images but the thing that I'm more interested in is parameters so I'm going to add a parameter and I am going to say enter armature resistance call it RA all right and the variable would be RA, all right? Apply. And let's see, what about initialization? How about if I do RA equal to uh, about 0 0.1? Yeah, okay, apply there. And let's add another one. How about uh, enter armature inductance? Okay, call it LA, all right? And then the variable would be LA. Actually, I probably don't even need those. Yeah, let's take those guys out. I don't think I even need those. And let's see. Why don't we uh, do an initialization, initialization on that and say LA also. Maybe that's 0 0.2. All right. So the initialization window and the parameters window. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, here we're at the high level of our control system because okay, there's our DC motor. But notice what happens. Now when I double-click on DC motor, I'm not going to see my subsystem. 
what I'm going to see is um, a, a, a window popping up for the value of armature resistance and armature inductance. So let's put 0 0.1 there, 0 0.2 there, apply that, OK, and uh, let's run the system. And now, if you go over here to your plot, zoom out, save that. Now, notice the DC motor is, um, you know, its response to a unit step is kind of has a little bit of overshoot, a little bit of oscillation. And then, of course, there's some DC, uh, DC um, error right there. Steady state error is not equal to zero. Well, let's put one more parameter in there for fun, all right? Well, you can't double click that guy, so how are you going to do that? Notice it remembered the values. That's kind of nice. Um, actually, let's do something real quick. You see this arrow right here? Yeah, that arrow appeared once you created the mask. So if you double click that arrow, now you can actually see your subsystem. So let's double click that guy. And there's your subsystem, right? And then I could use my Explorer window to look at the overall system or the subsystem DC motor. Um, go back to here, you double click, you get armature resistance, armature inductance. Um, yeah, let's actually put those variables back in there. If I right click, I say mask edit mask let's go back to parameters and then right here let's call this RA and let's call that guy comma LA let's apply that okay and now if you um, double click on your DC motor there you go it kind of shows you the variables right RA and LA okay and let's uh, decrease the uh, armature inductance to 0.1 okay and let's bring our window up here and we will run it and what happened well pretty much the same response didn't have a lot of effect here. all right well i think i'm going to stop right there but that showed you how to create a system and then a subsystem and the whole idea here is that you you know put your stuff that you're already you know troubleshot and everything's working well into a subsystem and then you can kind of build the uh, entire systems from building blocks all right okay, i'm going to stop right here and then maybe we'll continue on with the subsystems next time thanks